Hey everybody. Uh, so um, I saw or kind of got this like little revelation during um, first service worship. All right, I just did a video, um, you may have seen it, you may or may have not have seen it on my page that um, gave you a word for the body of Christ. This is also really a word of encouragement for the body of Christ. It's not um, as much of a prophetic word, but it's a word of encouragement, okay? Um, and it goes with the message series that my husband is preaching, Open Heaven, about open heaven, because it is time to live in an open heaven. The, or the um, Bible says that we as God's people, we, live, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. That means that uh, because we believe in Jesus as our Savior, we are in Him. He lives in us, in our hearts. His Spirit lives in us. Um, but also we are in him and he is seated at the right hand of the father on a throne of authority. And we literally are in Jesus. Our spirits are in him. We are the body of Christ living on the earth. And so even though we live on this earth, our spirits reside in the kingdom of God. Our spirits are sitting on thrones with Jesus. We have authority in the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven is higher than this earth's kingdoms um, and the ways of the enemy and the ways of human beings. So God's ways are higher and that is where we are seated. We are seated there in heavenly places. So I've been saying a lot lately, you guys keep your eyes on Jesus, keep your eyes on what he's doing. Uh, don't look at everything around you on the earth or everything in you know happening in you all of your emotions or any chaos happening uh, don't look at definitely don't look at the the works of the enemy like sickness and bitterness and hatred and disease and um, lies and deceptions and things like that don't look at those things okay eyes on Jesus not um, and as Dan has been teaching there's a first heaven second heaven and a third heaven don't look at the first heaven, that's the earth, okay? All the earthly things. Don't look at the second heaven, that's the enemy, that's the devil and the uh, demonic um, influences in that uh, they lie to people to say that they have authority over this earth. Um, and if people believe that, then they, they will buy into um, being under the enemy's authority, um, like sickness and things like that, okay? But when we um, live in Jesus and we, we know that we believe that we are seated in heavenly places with him, then we know that we have authority we, in the third heaven. And that is over the second heaven and the first heaven, which is earth. Okay, you could call them first, second, third heaven. You could call them spirit realms, basically. Humans live here in the demonic realm and then God's realm where the angels also dwell. Um, but what I wanted to say is, this is what God was showing me during the um, first service worship today. He was just showing me, it is so easy to live in God's kingdom and live in where there is peace and where there is joy in this place where God's presence dwells. It is easy because all it takes, we don't have to work at it. We don't have to make it happen. We don't... I mean, yes, there is a battle, like a spiritual battle that happens, but it's not really a fight because Jesus already won. You know, what we're doing is we are yielding. We are yielding to Jesus, and that's why it's so easy. We yield to what he already did for us on the cross, the, the victory that he's already won. And so going with that, while I was getting ready this morning, God was showing me that all the enemy's works are merely a distraction. They're just, they're like a smoke screen. It's a distraction from living in the open heaven that God intends for us as, God, as his people. It's a distraction from the heart of the Father. It's a distraction from his limitless goodness. Um, and so... In order to live in the open heaven, you have to agree with it. Instead, if you want to live under the enemy's influences, like manipulation or lies or bitterness or um, sickness or disease or 
um, broken relationships, all these things are works of the enemy, okay? Anything that would steal, kill, and destroy, the Bible says, is a work of the enemy. Those are distractions from, from God, but they are just smoke screens because you don't have to live under that authority. You don't have to live with that. Yes, we live in a broken world. Yes, we're gonna experience some of those things because the enemy's always trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So if we, we want to live in that place of abundant life, we have to um, believe that and agree with that abundant life that he bought for us. All we have to do is yield to it. It's already wide open. Jesus already tore the veil. He already made a way for us to, to, to live there in that abundant life, to live here in his kingdom. Even while we are on this earth and experiencing some things, chaos and things around us, but in us, we carry the kingdom of God. We can live in a place of abundant life. All we do is yield to God instead of yielding to the lies of the enemy. Um, so it's the easiest thing to live there in God's kingdom with peace. You can have joy, you can have health, you can have wealth, even if the opposite is happening all around you. You can have that because you are living in a different kingdom. Uh, yield to God instead of yielding to the lies of the enemy. And yield means to give attention to. Yield means to agree with. Um, I was, I'm just reading my notes as I'm looking down all the time. Uh, it means to think about those things. Think about the things of heaven instead of the things of earth. Speak about those things. Speak about Jesus and what he is doing and not what the, what's happening all around you on the earth or the emotions or chaotic things that you're feeling in you. Agree with Jesus and what he is doing. Yes, let's say you have symptoms of sickness and that is maybe a fact, but it's not the truth that you have to live with it. You can agree with Jesus and go, okay, Lord, what are you doing? I, I know that the enemy wants to put this sickness on me and, is get, and these symptoms and he would like me to get into fear and anxiety and worry about it. But Lord, what are you doing? Like, where is there is there sickness in your kingdom, Lord? What are you doing with this? And then he tells you, no, let, you know, pray that my will be done on earth as it is done already in heaven. Pray that you... Uh, Take for yourself the healing that I already purchased for you. Pray that you remain um, in faith, seeing things um, in with spiritual eyes rather than with natural eyes. And so I know it's hard when you yourself are going through something really difficult. You want to gather some maybe brothers and sisters in the Lord around you to help you because when you're feeling certain symptoms or you're feeling anxious and stuff like that, it's hard to really get the truth and get God's perspective. But if you can get some other people around you that, that can get God's perspective for you and with you, it will really help to fight that battle and to overcome the enemy. And then you're living that abundant life that Jesus paid for, right? So it is very restful. Like Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and you're heavy burdened, come to me. I'm going to give you rest. And so, um, it's restful because you're not making it happen. You don't have to work really hard to shine the light of Jesus. All you do is you let your light shine. The Bible says, let him, just let him do what he always does. Let him do what he always, what he already is doing. <laughs> you're basically just yielding to him and agreeing with him. And uh, so it's so easy and, and restful. Lord, I'm letting you fight for me. Lord, I'm letting you love me right in this place. Lord, I'm letting you shine out of me everywhere I go. Holy Spirit, I am letting you pour out of me with peace and with joy. Like you don't have to come up with your own peace and your own joy. You don't have to, oh, I gotta fight so hard against the enemy to get to peace. No, the enemy's fighting against you to try to take away the peace that you already have. You already have it. You live in a kingdom of peace. You live under the authority of the Prince of Peace. You have peace in you because the Holy Spirit has peace in him and you have the Holy Spirit in you. So you have peace. You have perfect peace in you. It's just uh, the, the stuff happening around you is covering it up. So let, let peace out, right? 
let those uh, anxieties and those worries be removed from your shoulders. Let those burdens off of you onto Jesus. Jesus said, cast your cares onto me because I care for you. So that's why it's easy to live in the kingdom of heaven. That's why it's easy to live under an open heaven. It's easy to live the abundant life that Jesus already died for you to have. He did all the work for you. We're just agreeing with him, with what he already did for us. So um, yeah, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on that, but it's very restful. Um, he automatically takes over. He automatically shines out of you when you just let him. You we're just yielding to him. And your life automatically um, becomes abundant when you are yielded to God's ways. <laughs> you know, not human ways and not the enemy's ways. All right. Anyways, I love you guys. Let me just pray for you really quick. So, Father, I just pray that people would grasp the truth of this, Lord, that we... You already did everything for us on the cross. You already did it, Lord, and the way is already made open. You already opened the door wide to your entire kingdom. You gave us your entire kingdom, Lord. You said it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the entire kingdom. He wants you to have everything that is his. It belongs to us as your children, Lord, and I thank you that you did that for us. We don't deserve it, Lord, but you did it, Lord, and, and you purchased it with the with your own blood, Lord, with your own with the sacrifice of your life, Lord, and you arose from the dead to win the victory for us, Lord, so that we don't have to fight, but Lord, you're fighting for us. All we have to do is yield to what you've done for us and what you're doing for us, Lord. So we come to you and we just yield to you. And I pray, Lord, that those who are watching and listening, Lord, that the entire body of Christ would grab hold of the truth of this, that we already live under an open heaven. We already live in an abundant kingdom. Even though we walk on this earth with a lot of chaos and difficult things happening, Lord. We are not of the kingdom of darkness, Lord. We are of the kingdom of light. We are already victorious in you, Jesus. And so I just thank you, Lord, that people are grasping that. Your people are grasping that, Lord. And we are spreading that fire. We are spreading that word. We're spreading your glory and your fame all over the earth, Lord. Lord, you automatically pour out of us. You automatically just shine brighter and brighter out of us, your, your people, Lord. Let us become a city on a hill that can never be um, put out, that can never be shaken, Lord, because uh, we're founded on you, Lord, and the light that we have is from you. It is you, Jesus. Our light is you, Jesus. And we just pray that many, many people are drawn to this uh, city on a hill, Lord, the, your people in this day and hour can rise up with um, love and joy and peace and unity, Lord, and many, many will be drawn um, into your kingdom because of your goodness uh, towards your people, Lord. So we just, we just thank you for it, Lord. We get to be part of the harvest and we get to be part of what you're doing in the earth today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, all the praise hands, Jody. <laughs> all right. Hey, love you, girl. Uh, watch from the beginning. It's really, it's encouraging. All right. Talk to you guys later.